today's video, I'm going to address some makeup mistakes that mature women make. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different so, than some other makeup mistake videos because instead of thinking that mature women wear too much makeup and are just not blending it out correctly, I think most mature women wear too little makeup or none at all because they are not confident on how to apply more makeup but still want to look pulled together but very natural. So that's what I am going to address today. Hey everyone, this is Lisa. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Lisa Monique Beauty, where we cover all things beauty and lifestyle for the over 50 women. I'd love if you consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so already. So I think it was much easier uh, when we were younger to go without makeup or go really light with makeup because our skin was clearer, it was more even toned, our features and skin were just a little bit higher lifted, our lashes and our brows were thicker and fuller. So even if you went your whole life not wearing any or just wearing very light makeup, sometimes surprisingly, as we age, we feel like we need a little bit more makeup to feel pulled together. Now, when my friends approach me and ask me for techniques or tips and how to wear their makeup or how to feel better like when they're going to work, it is never that they're wearing too much except maybe the eyeliner. Uh, sometimes they have that really heavy eyeliner all around their eyes. And trust me, that's how I wear mine half the time too. And then I'll look in pictures and everything and see that uh, it's really a harsh line. But overall, they're not wearing too much makeup. They're just not wearing enough to cover up just a few of the things that happen to us as we age. And as a photographer who does a lot of headshot photography and I do the hair and makeup for my headshot photography, I hear all the time from my mature women clients that they're not confident on how to wear makeup. So they usually skip it all together. Today, let's talk about those beginner makeup mistakes and how to correct them. So we're basically going for a light makeup look, one that would be appropriate running errands or going to work, that will still knock off five to 10 years off your face. The first makeup mistake, and you'll hear this in so many makeup mistake videos, is not prepping the skin you must prep your skin for the most flawless looking finish on your face makeup. If you had your makeup professionally done, the first thing they are going to do is put moisturizer on your skin and let it sink in while they might be working on your brows. So we need to do that all the time at home because what happens is your makeup will adhere to that moisturizer when it's lightly on your skin. And as that moisturizer gets fully absorbed into your skin, it helps the makeup set into the skin and it has a very, very, very natural finish. A couple of products I've talked about before, my Embryolisse Leg Creme Concentrate. You can buy this at like germ store. It's $28 for the large tube like this, $16 for the smaller tube if you just want to try it. This is a really, really great moisturizer. It's been recommended by makeup artists forever. When I went to a makeup school, this is the moisturizer that they recommended we stock in our kit. The other moisturizer that I like is just my daily moisturizer, and that's the e.l.f. Holy Hydration. I'm finally back in Florida, hence the beach picture behind me, uh, and I did get my e.l.f. Holy Hydration. It is fragrance free. It is a really nice moisturizing base. It absorbs well and it doesn't leave a tacky or a sticky feel on your face. And then of course my absolute favorite, which I don't have here with me in Florida, is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. I've always loved it. It is so luxurious. Uh, feeling and smelling and it, it was designed to be a makeup moisturizing base. So it really does excellent at that. So those are three that I would try. The way to apply it is just a little bit heavier. So you don't want to blend it all the way into your skin. You don't want to leave a really white, thick white coating, but just blend it in until it's almost blended in, even if you have a little bit of white spot, you know, left on your cheeks. And then you'll start with your eye makeup. And by the time you get to your face, that should be the perfect moisture level for your face makeup. Now the next beginner mistake, or mistake number two, that more mature women tend to make is not filling in their brows. Now, I actually have pretty filled in brows. I do fill out, fill in a little thin spots here and there, but overall, I actually still have 
nice brows. Not the case with many women my age. So my good friend Deb asked me to do her makeup. Uh, she wanted to have a makeup look appropriate for work. And so she allowed me to use her photos here and I will just show you. She actually still has a line of brows to follow, but we just filled them in and we didn't do strokes that went straight across. We actually did uh, upward strokes because that is more of the trend now. Not that we're trying to be super trendy when we're over 50 doing our makeup, but we do want to stay within the makeup trends and within the fashion trends, right? We're just trying to stay uh, current uh, so we don't look dated. <laughs> so anyway, so we do the light upward strokes and we filled in her brows. We didn't make them too thick. We didn't make them too heavy. Very, very nice and natural. And then we sealed them with a brow gel. I love the e.l.f. brow gel. I love the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow gel. And I also have the Charlotte Tilbury Brow Fix, and this is the only one I brought with me to Florida for some reason. Um, I do want to say I packed 30 pounds of makeup, a whole half of a suitcase and the bottom third of, on, on the other side, and I still left so much back uh, in Phoenix uh, that I would like to use while I'm doing my, my videos. So anyway, a brow gel just to hold your brows in place and make it last all day. Very simple and I think a lot easier now that you're just using little strokes to create the hair as opposed to really doing a thick brow. I like the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. It's a real thin, it's got a spoolie on one end and a real thin wind up pencil on the other end. Maybelline's Brow Ultra Slim Divining Eyebrow Pencil and the benefit my Precisely my brow pencils are also very thin point pencils that allow you to do little flicks. They build up really nice. They don't go on too dark and they don't smudge around. So you really want to find a brow pencil that's not just going to smear off your brows. Okay, mistake number three. This one I think is super important. One of the most important in taking five to 10 years off your face and so many women do not do it because they think they're not gonna be wearing eyeshadow, so they do not prep or prime their eyelids. As we age, we start getting the little purple veins, we start getting darkness in the center, or we might have redness all around our eyes, even right up under the lash. So important to prep and prime your eyes, even if you're not going to wear shadow. Just bring it back to your natural skin tone. So for that, I would recommend a concealer in your skin tone. I love the Lancome Tint Eye Doll Ultra Wear Concealer. It does not move into my creases uh, after I apply it. I did a video not too long ago about concealers that don't require, uh, that don't crease or require setting powders. I'll put that link up here so you can go see some other options. I love this one. I love the e.l.f. 16 hour hydrating camo concealer. I also love the MAC Paint Pot in um, my color now is laying low. I think it's laying low uh, before it was uh, soft okra. Uh, so, and for real pale skins, I use the painterly. Uh, again, you just want a nice, even coverage. Uh, when I'm using the concealers, I will actually do it under the eyes too. And I tap it out with my fingers, uh, or you could use a sponge. I will just lightly take my powder brush. I don't put any more powder on whatever was left over from the last time I used it. And I will just lightly sweep it around the eyes, uh, over the eyelashes and everything. And that just kind of really sets everything for a really nice base, a nice matte finish if I'm going without any eyeshadow. It has a huge impact on making you look younger. Now, if you are going to wear eyeshadow, the fourth mistake I think is not applying eyeshadow high enough for some reason. And I think it's because, you know, we're not used to having the, the hood starting to droop and cover more of our eye. But a lot of times people will just put their eyeshadow on that lower lid space and you really can't even see it when you are talking to someone. So you really, you want to put your eyeshadow up here, up on that orbital bone. And like I'm doing a one and done lid style. Uh, I showed you two different shadows. The first one is the Charlotte Tilbury, the Eyes to Mesmerize in Rose Gold, which is my all time favorite. I've had this one for two years. It doesn't dry out. It stays nice and mousse-like. They have beautiful golds too, if you're not into the rose gold shades and bronzy shades. Anyways, if you get one of those in a basic color, you will wear it all the time. Then today, 
on top of it, since I wanted to go with something that I thought was a little bit, had a little bit more color maybe for work. So I used a little darker brown, bronzy brown over it. This is a Laura Geller uh, Kajal Longwear Eyeliner and it's in a dark brown coal. So they did send this to me. I was so excited. They actually saw my Laura Geller video on the powder foundation and reached out to me and asked if I wanted to try anything else or if they could send me some products. Uh, so I'm on their PR list and so they sent this to me. It's, look how beautiful of a deep bronzy brown that is. Okay, the fifth mistake is another biggie. It, th this is another one that I would consider one of the, the major mistakes that mature women make, and that is not blending out your eyeliner. When we're younger and we have thicker lashes, you can get away with that more because it kind of blends in underneath your lashes. But as we age and our lashes get thinner and lighter and shorter, then it is more noticeable when you have that harsh, sharp edge of your eyeliner. Now, I will not tell anybody not to put eyeliner underneath their lashes because I feel like it defines my whole eye and it makes my eyes look bigger. So I like it and I will always do it, but I will try to blend it out really softly. So I love the Makeup by Mario Master Pigment Pro eyeliners. This is a uh, in perfect brown. And what I love is this brush. Originally, I didn't like this brush. I was like, oh my gosh, it's so long. How do you do anything with it? but it is so perfect for doing like a really good smudge to soften that line underneath. And so I just do it really messy. If it gets a little bit too low, I actually just push it up a little bit with my fingers because while it's still freshly applied, you still can move this around. And so I can push it up a little bit or I can even use the corner of a beauty blender and get it back up closer to my eye, but it will still have a really soft edge and just compare it with the other side where I just did what I always did before is I lined it and then I just kind of took my finger and went back and forth once or twice. That is a much, much, much harsher line and I think that can aid you. It almost brings a focus totally on that line, not on the whole eye together. The sixth mistake is not wearing mascara. I know a lot of women don't like to wear mascara because they think it smears under their eyes, it, it flakes under their eyes, they don't like taking mascara off at night. But again, when our lashes get thinner, and shorter, we need something to frame our eyes. We need to bring the attention back up to our eyes. Now I use a lash serum. I use the Rodan and Fields one, but I'm not saying that's the best one to use. There are several on the market and everyone that uses a lash serum, no matter what the brand, uh, seems to have good results. And so I do use that. So my lashes are still long, but it doesn't really make them thicker. So I use, have to use a volumizing mascara. First thing I do is I curl my lashes. I've talked about this before and I'm gonna talk about it again because it's still on sale. So it's such a good deal. I love the Refer Eyelash Curler. You get two refills with it and then in your, when you check out, you can ask for a complimentary set of refills with three more refills. So you get five refills for it. It is on sale right now in the Refer Concept Store for $16. This eyelash curler is a little bit longer, just a little bit than a standard eyelash curler and it's a little flatter. And so when I am going in to get into my lashes, especially going over my face when I'm doing the opposite eye, you know, I'm left-handed, so when I'm doing my right eye, I used to pull on these outer lashes for when I would squeeze, I must have done this type of motion. But that was because of the curvature and, and where I had to put the curler down, but this one's flatter. So I can get all my lashes right at the base, squeeze, squeeze in the middle, squeeze at the tip, and then I go back in at the base and squeeze, squeeze, squeeze at the base, and my lashes just lift up. I think that really opens your eyes. Uh, you can do it in a magnifying mirror, it makes it really easy to make sure that you have all, your, all of the lashes uh, in the curler. For mascaras, I have another video on thickening mascaras. Right now I'm using this L'Oreal one. I can't read which one it is on the back, so I will have to look it up and put it uh, down below also. This is one I had left in Florida. I've been wearing it every day here. It's not smearing, it's a little more humid here. It's not smearing, it doesn't flake. It coats my lashes all the way from the base to the tip and it is easy to apply. I almost feel like it's a little foolproof for a thickening mascara because I can go in multiple coats right away and it doesn't clump. I can do one eye, then the other eye, and then go back and it doesn't clump. I just have never gotten a big blob of mascara on my eyelashes with this one. So I really like it. Again, I'll put it down 
below. So mistake number seven is not correcting discoloration of the face. So I know as we age, we get a lot of different types of discoloration. I get melasma and I get uh, hyperpigmentation. I get the dark spots. Uh, most of my friends who are fair skin, they get the redness. They get the broken capillaries and redness around the nose, on the chin, and on the cheeks. But I think when you're so used to the redness, you don't see it as much. But I think that redness and the broken capillaries and everything definitely show a woman's age because that is something that happens when you're older. And you don't have to put a full face of makeup to get rid of it and make it look good. You just need the right products. Again, uh, going back to the Lancome Tint Eye Doll, just putting it around the nose and under the nose and on the chin. If you clear up this mask, even if you left redness or hyperpigmentation or age spots on the backside of your face, it really is so much less noticeable if you just color correct this mask. Again, the Elf Cosmetics, the Lancome Tint Eye Doll, but you will need to pick a shade that matches in your skin into your skin tone if you're not going to put on foundation. So again, I do not have any foundation on. I just have color corrected this area right here and it pulls the whole look together and makes it look like I'm wearing foundation. But you know what? I've still got that really skin-like finish because it is my skin and I still have my hyperpigmentation and things like that but it's just not as noticeable when this area is, is corrected. After applying the concealer, you can use just a light dusting of setting powder. I have just discovered, I've been using for the last couple of weeks, this Fenty Beauty one, the Pro Filter Setting Powder. And I just bought a mini size and I really like it. It, it does not build up cakey or anything like that. I think it has a very, very nice finish. Okay, mistake number eight is applying your blush too low or not at all. But when applying blush, uh, you definitely want to apply it up high on the cheekbone, not where we kind of grew up applying it right here. So you want to start up high on the cheekbone. Having said that, I was looking at the fall trends for 2021 and they are starting to put it all over the face again with no contour. So I'm not usually that trendy that jumps on them right away, but maybe neck by next year, I'll be putting my blush everywhere. But for right now, I think it is more useful to keep it up high on the cheekbone. And then I actually still like to put a little bit of blush under my eyes. Now I don't put it on the apples because when you smile and then unsmile, you see how my, it's dropping down here. I still want it up under the eye, kind of like where your sunglasses rest and so I just put a little bit up there. It kind of makes a little triangle check mark. And I think that keeps uh, drawing the attention up towards your eyes, which is the area that you want to emphasize to have a more pulled together look. I, then I also just take my brush after applying and just do a little bit over my eyelids to add a little bit of flush to kind of pull everything together. And the final mistake that, that more mature women make is they still use matte lipsticks. I have a drawer full of matte lipsticks, but my lips have gotten deflated and a matte lipstick really brings it out. So I like to use a lipstick with a little bit of gloss. You can still use a bullet lipstick or a stick lipstick. This one isn't a bullet. Um, there are so many formulations with just a little bit of shine. Like, look at that. Look how pretty that is. Or I like to just use a gloss. Like right now I am wearing this Bare Minerals lip lacquer in the shade is called Everything. And that's what I'm wearing right now. It's very close to my natural lip shade and it has just enough gloss uh, where I like it. I love the Fenty Gloss Balm. And of course I love my Maybelline Lifter glosses. So those are the makeup mistakes I see most often in mature beginners. It doesn't take long to do a simple look like this, 10 to 15 minutes, depending how long for the brows. I will say brows tend to take the longest. But if you like this content, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time.